What's up, what's up, everybody? What's up? Back to Real Talk with Dr. T. Uh, just another segment, another episode. Glad to have everybody on here once again. Uh, like, that, like always, I'm Dr. T, uh, author, medical speaker, uh, mentor, uh, podcast host, uh, life coach, Christian counselor. Um, and this on this segment, y'all, we, we talking about from pain to purpose. So again, from pain to purpose, guys. Uh, we all have some type of trauma, some type of pain, um, some type of hurt. 
but we don't have to be vic- we don't have to become victims of that hurt. We don't have to become victims of that pain. And we can we can come not just come out of it, but we can monetize it. We can monopolize monopolize all the pain we've gone through and encourage somebody else. I have somebody, a friend, a friend of mine, an acquaintance, and a colleague of mine. Uh, we met years ago um, through mutual friends, um, and, and she's a boss. She she is a boss for real. She has her own business. Um, she has an event coming up on the 18th of this month. Um, I will be a panelist on that, but she's been doing her boss thing. Um, and she is extremely successful at uh, an entrepreneur at best. Um, Alexis Evans, how you doing? I'm doing great. How are you doing, Dr. Antoine Thurston? I'm well, I'm well. How's your day been going so far? It's been busy since 4.30 this morning, but it's been going well. Okay. How about your day? Busy as well. Busy, <laughs> productive, up and down, you know. I remember um, a guy I knew in business. He, he's passed on now, but he was extremely successful making six figures, and he said, Antoine, you know, when you look at the heart rate, you go to a hospital for a heart rate, um, and he says, when it's going up and down, the heart rate, I mean, they're alive. Right. The moment they flatline and die, it's at the same level. And so that's how business is, and that's how life is. Right. People feel like they always got to be up, or they always got to be down. You know, you're living if it's up and down. You don't never want to be stagnant. You don't ever want to be stagnant. You want to be moving. You, you know? want to be moving. Yes, yes, I agree with that. You definitely do. And so, um, you know, we all go through ups and downs. And I think some of us, and some people, they go through the down moment, but they don't realize there's a, 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 an increase, an ascension coming up. And so I want, want you to just tell people a little bit about yourself. Who are you? Who is Alexis? Um, what do you actually do? Tell them exactly what you do um, and so forth. Well, my name is Alexis Evans. I am the CEO and founder of Boss Talk Expo, which is an annual um, event management firm. We have annual trade shows, networking events. Uh, we've been going for almost six years strong. Um, I'm also a Walmart partner. I have my own cosmetic line with FBI Cosmetics, where I service some of the Walmart customers and hotel chains. Um, I just got my new warehouse recently, so I'm so excited about that. And I also have a private consultant firm where I help people manage their business where it comes to their finances, um, government contracts, and I have so many things that's going on behind the scenes. I am always busy, 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 busy. <laughs> okay, 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 cool, cool. Good afternoon, uh, Tamay. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, um, so, uh, when we initially met, you know, we was all, we were working on some things with some vendors, with Clarissa and all that. It didn't really go through at one. But ever since then, you know, we've been connected on the social media platform. Correct. You, you haven't always been where you are. No. Um, and not. so, you know, I remember you telling a little bit of your story. What what transpired? What happened for you to change your mindset to get here at this point in your life? Well, um, everyone knows I have a felony from my early teen, early adult years um, where I was facing um, five to 10 years in prison. Um, my attorney, my mom could not afford it at the time. My family couldn't afford it. I have lost all everything that I had, even the money that I had saved up trying to help them. I ended up representing myself and won my case on my own. And I walked away with just two years probation, which I'm so proud of myself for doing. Uh, <laughs> uh, from that point, I just knew once everything went downhill, I was not able to find a job. I had the education. I had everything that I needed. But no one would never hire me because I had a felony. But they say they want you to get back out into society and become successful. But that's not the case. It's not. Um, reality is a not. That's why a lot of people go back to doing a lot of bad things they're doing because society is not made for us to come back and really re- rebuild ourselves. And that's the God honest truth. Um, from that point, um, I just knew that I wanted much better. I looked around at my family. I looked around at my friends and I looked around at everybody and I see that they was just not doing anything. They didn't want any better. Um, so I started getting around other people and started, you know, training myself to say, I want more. I started speaking to myself, speaking mm-hmm. things into existence and not just speaking, it, but working it into existence. So I started going around different environments. 
I would show up at different bars. Um, and I'm not just like bar bar, but like a bar for happy hour where you have your people in their pants, their suits and ties and sitting at the bar and holding conversations with different people who had money, getting around different cultures. And when I started seeing a different atmosphere, everybody was happy. Everybody was smiling. Everybody was driving nice cars. And it's like, what am I doing? And I looked around at my family. No one's not doing that. Nobody's not happy. Everybody, mm -hmm. They're living paycheck to paycheck. They're struggling. And I didn't want that. So I had to make a choice. It's either I continue to go down this same path or break this generation curse that we have. And that's where, I, I, that's where I'm at now. I love that because every millionaire and every six-figure income earner is going to tell you you have to change your environment. Right. Um, you know, and it's the song we used to have in high school. You you about know it. You can take the nigga out the ghetto, but you can't take the nigga out of me. <laughs> and, and it was a song we had. We played it was at um, Orlando for you know the senior high night. The, the scene when you see the, the, the bash. I've got it, the grad bash. And it's like it's not enough, but it is not enough to take us out the environment. We gotta we gotta do some inward work, and that's what you did. You know, and some of the time we want we just we just want to be out of the environment. But we're not, not going to change what's on the inside. Right. And we say we want it, but like you said, you didn't want just speaking it, you were doing something. Right. Um, uh, reading, self-education. And you and you took initiative, you took the initiative to get out, get in, get outside your comfort zone. Yeah. What did that feel like getting outside your comfort zone? It was a challenge. I felt like I didn't belong. It took a while for me to realize that I was more worthy than what I thought. I had to get past that self-doubt and really push outside my mindset. Like, you belong. You just need practice. You need the right people around you to keep pushing you. Because even though I was moving towards the right direction, but I still had people behind me that was still in the hood and the ghetto and my <laughs> environment that was still telling me, you wouldn't be anything. That's not for you. You acting so bougie. That's not for like all type of stuff. But at the end of the day, now I'm in a position where I could go back and help those same people pay their rent, put groceries on their table, help them with daycare. And it's not like I'm gloating, but I have confidence mm -hmm. in what I'm doing because at the end of the day, you didn't believe in me, but I believed in myself enough to say, let me keep going. Even mm -hmm. if it, I cried plenty of nights, I struggled, I failed, but look where I'm at now. Mm -hmm. That's good, I like that because so many times we see people where they are, but we don't we don't see we see the glory but don't see the story. Right. And, right. You know, what I like that you said you were transparent is you didn't believe in yourself at first. How long did the process take for you to start to really believe that you could do this? When I started getting away from family members, even my mom, I love my mom to death, but even her with her mindset, um, because of her environment and the way she was brought up, she she's not where I'm at now, but she sees it and she understands it. And times has changed. And once I got away from family members and those so-called friends, that's when my mindset shifted. And that's when my vibration went higher. And when that went higher, my confidence and my ability to do more went further. You said your migration. I love that. Because I just actually talked about uh, time zones. But I never I never got to a point where you're talking about animals. Animals have an instinct, yeah. and they, mig they migrate to places that they can flourish. Animals, animals will, will leave a place that's dead. Even in Africa, the buffalo, even the buffalo and the wildebeest, if there ain't no grass right here, they leave. Right, and right, they, right. They're going to migrate to another place that they can live and flourish. And, and sometimes, as humans, we stop and we kill and we allow the environment to kill our instinct. True. And, we, and we stop dreaming and, and going, go to the places that flourish, not the places that's dead. And we'll stay in dead places. You know, it's, it's a whole nother thing because you, Lord oh, Jesus, it <laughs> reminds me of, because I feel it coming because it's like, I saw this video, these little chimpanzees, these little monkeys, and they made a pack. I'm literally, I'm, I'm, I'm serious. They made a pack, it's a video, with lions. And they would trick the Impala that the lions weren't around and so forth, so they wouldn't get eaten and allow the lions to get the impalas. And it was so genius of them, but in the end, they were still losing. 
Mm. So some of us have this monkey mindset. We betray one another, we stab each other in the back. But they were really supposed to be, no, monkeys are really lookouts. They warn the other animals. But they want warning because it was beneficial to them. And so to save their life, they're jeopardizing the life of another just to save their tail. And so, like you said, sometimes people have that monkey chimpanzee mindset because they have a poor mind. They will jeopardize good relationships, right relationships, for the sake of not getting eaten. But not right. getting eaten in the long run is depriving them economically, socially, emotionally, and every other way. Right. So, no, I get what you're saying when it comes to the scientific part about that. Yes, yes, yes. You know, it's, 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 and you say getting away from your family. Family sometimes is the biggest enemy. And we're so close to our family sometimes. They're just, it's just that negativity. It's that negativity or that mindset. Um, and getting into those environments that can see who we are, what we can become. Um, you were about to say something? Yeah, I was going to tell you. Um, I tell people all the time my empire is destroyed from within. Mm. Um, a lot of people don't understand that. So your empire is really destroyed from within. So if you allow your family and people to destroy you from within, you're not prepared for what could be the destroy the destruction on the outside from the empire. So I, at a certain level, you have to take your mindset. A lot of, your mind can play so many tricks on you. Mm -hmm. So many tricks. I don't care how powerful you are, how wealthy you are, how much money, how much power you think you have. Your mind can play tricks on you if you allow it to. And what I do in order to keep my mind at a nice, I want to say playing field, is I meditate. I have to meditate. Um, I listen, like it's raining now. I listen to rain sounds. At nighttime, I turn off that TV. I meditate. I listen to meditation music, rain sounds, and just let my mind just clear itself from all the doubt, all the negativity. And just say, you know what? I got this. I really do. That's good. That's good. Because if we, and meditation is, is good for the brain and it, and it comes out spirit and soul. It helps us regulate. It helps us regulate our thinking. It does. It does. And, and it's very common. And sometimes you just, you got to just take those breaks and just, like you said, meditate on something positive, mm -hmm. on something um uh, that's beneficial for you as a, as a person because sometimes we're always giving and giving energy and giving our resources and giving our help, giving our words that we never have anything left for ourselves. And so you get we, burned out. You get burned out, exactly. And burnout is really a result of not prioritizing. No. What do you think of burnout? What would you say so, to someone that is burned out as an entrepreneur? If you are burned out and I have been there before, I understand. Um, my suggestion to them, my advice is to take a moment, take a step back and see where you're giving so much at. And if you're not receiving anything back out that helps balance out that receiving and giving aspect, then stop giving. It's OK to stop giving. It's OK to say no. It's OK to not do. It. It's OK to not show up. It's OK not to walk away. It's OK to not be a part of every table. It's yeah. OK. So at the end of the day, once you start realizing, and I had to realize that mm -hmm. if you knew me a couple of years ago, you knew I had to be perfectionist. That I could not let anything slide through the cracks. And I had to understand that, Alexis, you're, you're burning your stuff out. You're exhausted. Take a step back and understand no one is perfect. Mm -hmm. No one is perfect. Stop burning your stuff out. Stop giving, 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 giving. And that's the type of person I would have always been giving. So now it, to say no, it's so easy. I say no with no explanation. <laughs> I like that. With a period, not a question mark. That's it. And, and, and you know, I had to learn that as well. I was even, when I was going through my counseling uh, with my uh, counselor, she was saying, Antoine, you, you got to be careful of energy vampires. Mm -hmm. You know, people that just, even she said, Antoine, I have to say, Antoine, I have to even set boundaries with my clients. You know, and there were days where I couldn't reach her as a counselor for two weeks because one, she's in school, she works full time job, she got another job, she's in school, she's working, she's doing, and then she's a counselor. So she can't give her time to every client like she wants to. And, they, and people have to understand you have a life outside of what you do. Right. And some people get offended because you're not available. It's not that I'm not available, I can't give all my energy to one thing all the time. I have mm -hmm. to prioritize my energy, I have to prioritize. 
and compart compartmentalize my efforts, my energy, my time, and who I am as a person. Um, and, and so that's where the burnout, like you said, the burnout is. We overextend ourselves trying to be superheroes to everybody. Right. And the superhero syndrome. And if we do that, we wear ourselves out, like you said. And I had to do that. I stopped doing stuff. I was wearing myself out because I was overextending, saying yes to this, doing this, doing that, doing that. And, I, and sometimes when we do that, we, we miss or, or take our eyes off the moon. Off the mission. Yes, you do. You know, and then you people get, use you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they'll use you. Abuse, they'll abuse what you have. Right. Um, and just like you said, no is the is, is taking your power back, too. No gives, takes yeah. out power back. Um, yeah. How do people react as an entrepreneur? Uh, when when you go from pain to purpose, what does that look like as a person and as an entrepreneur? Meaning? You said you want me to explain it? Yeah. So when I say going from pain to purpose, what did it look like mentally? What does that even look like spiritually? Um, okay, so... What, what change, what, how did people respond when you started going from pain to purpose? Or pain to purpose? Oh. They didn't like it. They didn't like it. They like, it. let me tell you something about people. People love when you struggle. Mm -hmm. They love when you're down and out. I don't care who it is. I don't care what level it is, what family, what culture you're from. Yeah. People love it. Misery loves company, right? Yeah, they yeah. love when you're at the same level they are below them. Because at that time, that means that, okay, if I'm nothing, you're nothing, right? Yeah. But if you're something and I'm nothing, then they have a problem with that. Mm -hmm. But it's okay. So when you understand that, um, I was reading a segment and listened to a podcast, and she, I think it was um, B. Marie or some, and B. something like that, the comedian. And she said she had to leave home and leave her environment in order to pursue her dream. Leave her family, leave her friends, leave all that stuff. She had to make a sacrifice for her dreams, and she didn't regret it. So when you get to that mindset and to that place to understand that what you're pushing for, you have to sacrifice a lot. That means you won't be at your kid's recital. You won't be at the family reunion. You can't be at the, all the Christmas and Thanksgiving events or, you know, the cookouts, the, the family vacations, because you're sacrificing that for greatness. Once you get to a level where you're making the money, where you have, you know, succeeded, then you can travel back, double back and say, you know what, let me kind of make up for those family vacations. Let me kind of make up for those long talks I haven't had with my siblings or my parents. But a lot of people don't understand that. They feel like they're missing out so much. In reality, you are. And sometimes you're going to feel like, dang, I could have been hanging out with the girls. I see some of my friends hanging out or I seen them taking a trip. But when you're working on building an empire, an yeah. actual business that's for longevity, for you to have passive residual income, you don't have time to hang out. You don't have time to take vacations. You don't have time sometimes to even sleep. You, your schedule as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, is always 24-7. And a lot of people are not cut out for that. And they see that once they step in those shoes and they say, you know what? This is not for me. I'm better off in a nine to five. And that's okay. Corporate America is good for some people, but it may not be good for me. I like that. And, and, and that's the thing. Some people, like you said, they're not, they're not cut out for entrepreneurship. They need the nine to five. But then some people are entrepreneurs at a nine to five and, and they hate it, you know, because they want the time freedom. What would you say to those individuals that are those entrepreneurs and they want to be full time entrepreneurs? What would you really say to those people? So what she, would I say to those who are entrepreneurs that want to be full time? Well, they have that entre I'll say entrepreneur spirit, entrepreneur desires. To, and they're working a nine to five. Yeah, working a nine to five. I tell everybody, um, do your research before you step into that. That's that's um, that limelight. Like, do your research, play with it for a little while, test it out. Keep your nine to five. Don't leave your nine to five. Make sure this is something that you really want to do. And when you are prepared to leave that nine to five, make sure you have enough savings for at least six months to 12 months. And I say 12 months to be on the safe side. Because the way the price for things now, and if you're doing anything with inventory, with products, you got to have that money. Nothing is cheap. Your dream is going to cost you. Being a boss costs. 
it definitely do cost everything down to you getting your entities down to resell it costs to be the boss and um if you're not prepared for that it's not for you keep your nine to five i love it i love it you love it i like it i love it you like it <laughs> so um i love it because the mindset is is all about mindset right and it, and it and it does take time to get to that mindset sometimes some things just take time adjustment evaluation you learn from your losses you do um, and you know and you make mistakes um so where does and where did your faith come in at you know you had certain things happen and how does your faith affect what you do? my my faith has always been there it always been there it's just that it just took time for my for me to see it come to light um, my faith has been there since a little girl. And one thing my grandma told me, she said, always have hope. That's the only thing you can rely on is hope. Nothing else. If you ain't got nothing else, it's hope. Mm -hmm. And um, so what I, I, I love to write. I could go through a whole notebook, college rule book, maybe in two weeks. I write so much. Um, and I write to God. I have a shoebox from years ago when I wrote things that I wanted him to bless me with. And it came. You know, it came. I go back sometimes to that box and like, dang, that happened. Yeah, that, yeah. I did that. I, yeah. I I had that. You know, I got that car, brand new car. Mm -hmm. Oh, I moved into that place. So I bought that property. Or oh, I made my first six figures. I did that. Or, you know, I took care of this. I was able to buy a whole complex, apartment complex, Christmas gifts. And I did that. You know, I bought all the kids Christmas stuff. So I have done things by writing to God. That's who... I keep my faith where I write it and I know that it shall come to pass when it's going to come. I don't know. That's between God and my letter. Yeah. And I know it happened. So that's my faith. It took me. That's the only thing that kept me going. Mm -hmm. That's what kept me out of trouble. That's kept me on a straight path is speaking to God, believing. Um, you know how a child has an imagination. I'm that yeah. child. I know it's coming. Whether yeah. you see it or not, I know it's coming. And, and, you know, me and my cousin, we were talking about that last year. I had a speaking engagement in, a speaking engagement in Jacksonville. And we would five-hour drive from to seven-hour drive because they cut off our 95 and we had to take a whole other route. Mm -hmm. um, but we talk about imagination. When we kids, we have an imagination. But when we grow up, we stop imagining. We, we do. We don't see anything else. We just see what we see in front of us and we stop dreaming. And so, you know, like mm -hmm. that hope kept me dreaming. That hope right. of keep you dreaming, and you and you we gotta keep our why in front of me. That's why my vision is right behind me, you know. And I keep that stuff in front of me, and and it's like sometimes we can want something and can't get it because the subconscious of our mind is canceling out some stuff. Even psychiatry, like I kid you not, is proven psychologically. Seventy-five to eighty percent of our what happens is in our subconscious, not even the conscious. So if we don't reprogram our thinking, basically. We can sabotage a lot of things we want. So right. like you said, you was always praying. You was always meditating, focusing on what's positive, what you can do. And that's what brings that manifestation. That's what brings things into fruition. That's what God asks us for, that's faith. So we can, we got to have the faith, that imagination, um, and put it into action at the same time. You know, like you said. So, you know, I'm loving it. Uh, I just think that, uh, like you said, you just got to keep pushing. You have to. You can't. Uh, what was, I think one of the, the greatest things even for, for some people is, uh, I think sometimes entrepreneurship is glamorized. Mm -hmm. and, and people don't understand, you got some days, you ain't made nothing. You got some days, don't nobody call. How do people, how do you, how would an entrepreneur or person that's trying to go from purpose Pain to purpose and pain to profit. Navigate those areas, in those those low places. Um, like I stated before, you gotta keep hope. Every day is not gonna be peachy and cream. It's not. Mm -hmm. Um, you gotta, every every industry has their seasons. Um, so some seasons may be up, some seasons may be down. That's just how business is. Mm -hmm. Um, it may be a moment where if you when you least expect it, you just gotta stay consistent as much as you can. Um, I know everybody say consistency. It's days you may want to get up and not do nothing for your business at all because you're drained, you're tired. 
but stay consistent, stay true to the mission and don't give up because you're not going to make those sales every day. You're not going to make no sales every week. You're not going to make your goal every month. That's just the realization of people. Social media have given a blind eye to what hard work is really is. They have made so many people think, oh, if you just start a business, you're going to become a millionaire overnight. And that's just not the case. Mm -hmm. They don't talk about the overhead costs. They don't talk about the back office. They don't talk about how you're supposed to be properly structured. They don't talk about how you're supposed to pay yourself. A lot of people are so lost in the stalls to starting a business and owning a business properly to it's not even funny. Like for my private firm where I consult a lot of people, you, I help so many of them get back on the right track and they say, Alexis, I didn't know this. Um, say, of course you did because social media has glamorized to make you think, oh, you could drive a work, uh, a new Bentley um, Dawn or whatever like that. And it's just going to be the fabulous life. That's not the case. So what can a person do? Um, what does it take? Um, to really sustain this. Um, what does to, it sustain. Take to sustain? To sustain it, you will have to watch and repeat. Keep doing what you're doing. Don't mess up. This. You got to have a system in place. System. That's what a lot of people mess up at. They don't have any systems in place. They just all over the place. Have a system in place and keep going with it. Trust me, it's going to work. You got to keep that same system in position <laughs> for the next. Keep going and know who you're and I want to say your target audience, but that is just so played out because there, it depends on your industry. Some industries service everybody. You want to try like Amazon, it service everybody. Yeah. That yeah. website service everybody for whatever you need. Walmart yeah. service everybody for whatever you need, especially if you, you're so frugal and you want it on a low budget. Do you have Target for the little more bougie people? That, <laughs> so they it service everybody. So you got to know your industry and know what you're putting out there and who you're servicing. And when you're doing something with service or product, don't put everything out there. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Test it out. You know, get feedback on different things that you're doing. But stay consistent and stay within the system. I love it. I love it. So what's next for Alexis? Next? Oh, oh, my God. <laughs> Alexis is right now trying to do more business with South Florida. Um, I just um, I have my firm called South Florida Business Association. I have been approved for the Orange County, um, Leon County, different uh, Duval County to do business with them, um, to come and teach business etiquette um, classes and different things like that. And also take up some more private firms and help them get their business to the next level. So right now I'm working on those things to, you know, really expand throughout South Florida and help as many people actually run a successful business. Um, not a, just a fly by night and you just make a, a good amount of money and that's it. No, I'm trying to really build you an empire so you can be able to pass it on down to your kids and your kids' kids. Do you help um, nonprofit as well? Nonprofit is not on the agenda at the moment, but some. So how can people reach Alexis? Um, you can reach Alexis um, at info at BossTalkExpo.com or BossTalkExpo all platforms or on um, Facebook as Alexis Evans. Is there anything else you would like to say to the audience before we transition off? Well, I want to tell everybody, we, me and Dr. Thurston would like to see you next weekend at the 6th Annual Boss Talk Expo that will be at the Broward County Convention Center here in Fort Lauderdale. Get your tickets at www.bosstalkexpo.com, hashtag Boss Talk Expo. And if you see our billboards on the highway, also hashtag Boss Talk Expo. And we hope to see you soon. All right, y'all heard it, y'all. She the boss. <laughs> it calls me the boss, baby. It does. Uh, <laughs> yes, it does. I hope everybody's enjoyed it. I hope it, it empowered everyone, the impartation of information. Um, thank you, Alexis. I'm looking forward to doing other things with you in the future. I'm looking forward to see this event as well, and I'm honored to be on the platform. Everybody, peace, peace out. We love you. Real talk with Dr. T. We have real conversations about real issues with real people. Thank you. God bless. <laughs>